Hi and uh, welcome to Math 574 Topics in Logic. The topics of this semester will be algorithmic information theory, complexity, and data compression. In this lecture I would like to give a brief introduction, a short overview over these topics, um, what motivates them and uh, how they are connected. I think the best way to do this is to look at a paper that uh, Kolmogorov, uh, one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century, published in 1965. It's uh, called Three Approaches to the Quantitative Definition of Information. It's quite a short paper, as you can see, but uh, it contains the three basic notions that we will be dealing with the three approaches, which are combinatorial, probabilistic, and a new approach he calls the algorithmic approach. The basic question Kolmogorov is dealing with is how can we mathematically measure the content of information? So what does it mean to have a higher content of information for some object or a message than another message. The basic paradigm to approach this question is to identify information content with message length, namely the length of the message needed to transmit the information from one person to another. So the basic setup that we will uh, be dealing with is a person A trying to transmit some information X to a receiver B and uh, we assume that this uh, information is usually transmitted uh, electronically so um, we uh, assume that this is happening through a binary channel so let's uh, first look at a very simple example. So we start with a finite set with uh, n elements. And uh, we also assume that the, the elements are numbered in some way. So x1 through xn. And uh, this numbering is uh, available to, to both the sender and the receiver. Now A picks an element from this set and he wants to communicate to B which one he chose. Well, in that case, it, it suffices to simply send the index i such that x is equal to xi. So we just, a has, just has to send the number of the uh, element to b. So that's a number between 1 and n. And uh, in binary, that uh, needs at most log binary logarithm of n bits. So we uh, define the combinatorial entropy of the set X, or we can also think of it as a variable that uh, can assume values little x1 through little xn as simply the binary logarithm of the uh, cardinality of that set. So this is why it's called the combinatorial entropy, because it's essentially a matter of counting and uh, counting the number of elements in the set X, uh, the set from which A chooses an element. A common situation um, when it comes to transmitting messages uh, is, of course, when uh, the object that uh, A wants to communicate is a string over some finite alphabet. So, for instance, when uh, uh, the uh, uh, message is just a, a plain English, then uh, the underlying alphabet would be the, the 26 characters of the uh, English alphabet. Or um, transmitting phone numbers, then the alphabet would be numbers 0 to 9. So now assume we want to uh, communicate a string of length k. 
So then there are n to the k possible such strings over the uh, alphabet A. The combinatorial entropy of this is then uh, the binary logarithm of uh, n to the k, which is just uh, k times the uh, binary logarithm of n. So this means that um, for strings, the uh, number of bits needed to transmit this string is uh, bounded by the length of the string times the combinatorial entropy of the alphabet. So for uh, strings over some alphabet, it is essentially the entropy of the alphabet that determines the uh, number of bits needed. M mathematically, this um, points to a property of entropy that will be important later on, namely that entropy is additive. So assume that uh, our string sigma is made up of the characters sigma 1 up to sigma k, then the entropy of that string is the sum of the entropies of the individual characters that uh, together constitute that string sigma. And in, in, in this case, it's just k times the entropy of the alphabet, as we saw. Let's do a, a simple example. Um, how many bits are needed to transmit a copy of the New York Times? Um, well, let's do some rough estimates here. Uh, assume that a, a copy of the New York Times contains um, a million characters. And uh, the, the alphabet over which uh, these characters are chosen, um, let's say, has size 50. It has to contain all the, uh, the English alphabet plus the numbers plus some, some extra uh, uh, characters. So let's just work with 50 here. So then um, the number of all possible texts of uh, length 1 million uh, over this alphabet would be 50 to uh, 1 million. So the message length or the bits needed would be the binary logarithm of this, uh, which would be uh, 10 to the 6 times the uh, entropy of the alphabet, as we have seen. This example, however, points to something very important. Namely, when we transmit long strings, such as uh, an issue of the New York Times, we can often exploit additional knowledge about the frequency with which characters occur. And uh, that allows us to reduce the number of bits needed in transmitting uh, this string. Here, for example, we have the uh, distribution of relative frequencies in the English language. So, when, and we see that, for instance, the letter E occurs much more often than, um, let's say, the letter Q. Right, so this is the, the relative frequency of, of each letter. So how does this knowledge um, about the distribution of, of relative frequencies of, of letters help us in uh, devising shorter messages? Well, um, let's deal with this abstractly. Just assume that a language has uh, alphabet A1 up to AN, and that in that alphabet, a letter A sub I occurs with frequency P sub I. Well, that, that means uh, that uh, the number of occurrences of AI uh, divided by K, so if we, if we deal with a text or string of length K, is uh, exactly PI, so approximately for, for sufficiently large K. The crucial fact is now that the uh, number of texts or strength of length K over an alphabet A with the frequency distribution P1 up to Pn is approximately 2 to the K times H. 
where h is this number here. It's uh, minus the sum of pi times the binary logarithm of pi. The binary logarithm of this number is, of course, k times h. So this would be the number of bits needed to transmit this text. Under the assumption, uh, and this is important, under the assumption that the letter ai occurs with frequency pi in the text. So combinatorially, we had that the entropy was length times binary logarithm of the size of the alphabet. Now we have the value k times h, where h is the sum defined uh, on, on the previous slide. The question now becomes whether h is smaller than the binary logarithm of n. That is, does the knowledge that our characters are distributed uh, uh, according to the distribution p1 to pn save us bits when transmitting our text? It is common to interpret the uh, values p1 to pn as, as probabilities, and uh, then this uh, value h is called the entropy of the distribution. So when is h much smaller than um, the binary logarithm of n? Well, it's not hard to see that this is the case if the pi's are unevenly distributed. So, for instance, if uh, one of the uh, pi's is much larger uh, than, than the others, or much smaller, and so on. So, this means that h is less than the binary logarithm of n. On the other hand, if the pi's are evenly distributed, Then we have that h is equal to the binary logarithm of, of n. This number h will be the most important number uh, for the entire course. So I would like to give an alternative interpretation. Suppose we have an experiment that produces a number between 0 and 1, call that number x. But we are not given the exact value of x. We are only given that uh, x lies in a certain interval. Um, in this example, 1 out of 4 possible intervals, 1, 2, 3, 4, and assume that the lengths of uh, the intervals are p1, p2, p3, and p4, respectively. So now, what information do we gain from knowing that x is, let's say, in interval 1? Well. If it's in interval 1, we obviously gain quite a bit of information because we narrow down the possible position of x quite a lot. On the other hand, if we learn that x is in interval 3, we don't learn much about uh, that much about x because interval 3 is rather large. So the uh, entropy of the distribution, so the entropy of the length, measures the expected information gained by knowing that our value x is in interval i. So here we have the formula again. 
And here we can see. So this is uh, an expected value, namely the expected value of neg the negative logarithm of uh, um, pi. And again, it turns out that the uh, information gained, so the, the expected information gained is rather small if one of the uh, intervals for, in, for uh, example is rather large, because then with high probability x will end up in that interval and we don't gain much information by knowing that x is in that large interval. The highest entropy or expected information gain in fact uh, uh, happens when all the intervals are of the same size. So if we had a distribution like this, if the um, uh, so with the red int intervals that have all the same length. You may have heard that entropy is also considered a measure of uh, disorder or, or randomness in the system. How does this relate to what we've seen so far um, in the sense that uh, entropy measures uh, information um, or information gain? Well, we will, uh, we will study that in detail and we'll look at the, the origins of, of uh, entropy in, in uh, physics, uh, uh, specifically thermodynamics. But uh, I think there's the third approach that uh, Kolmogorov mentions that um, gives us um, some idea very, very quickly how, how entropy can be uh, seen as uh, a measure of randomness or disorder. And uh, I mean now entropy in the sense of uh, uh, bits needed to transfer information. To introduce the algorithmic approach, we, we consider uh, our basic model again. So we have A uh, transmitting information to B. But now the, the setup is a little bit different in the following sense. So A still wants to uh, wants to communicate a message or a string, uh, sigma, to uh, uh, B. And it still happens over a binary channel. But now the, uh, uh, um, a, the, the two people involved, A and B, have uh, also at their dis disposition a uh, computer, um, call it M, machine M, so this is a, a machine or computer. And uh, now the idea is in order to uh, communicate sigma to B, A does not send um, a, um, a code of sigma of some sense or, or just the, the, the number of, of sigma in um, in, in a set of possible uh, texts that he could send. And instead, he sends um, B a program. So he sends B a program. Call it uh, P. And then B goes ahead and uh, uses the machine M to input P to the machine, and then the machine outputs uh, sigma. So now the question becomes, what is the length of the shortest program that uh, using machine M, B can input into the machine and then obtain sigma as the output. So what is the length of the shortest program that uh, when fed into M produces sigma? So in that case then A would just send this program to B and B using machine M can produce um, 
the string that A wants to communicate. This measure of, of information we just discussed is uh, now known as Kolmogorov complexity. And it was introduced by Kolmogorov in the 1965 paper as the algorithmic approach to information content. So again, it's the Kolmogorov complexity of this of a string is the length of the shortest program producing sigma as output with respect to a given machine. So here in um, uh, as a formula, a formal definition, C of sigma, C for Kolmogorov complexity, is the minimum of all program length. So P is the program. This is the length of the, the program P in, um, uh, given as a binary input, so that the machine M uh, produces sigma uh, as its output when given P as input. Of course, there's a number of issues that um, we have to deal with here. Of course, we, one uh, the most uh, obvious issue is that doesn't this model of uh, or measure of, of information not depend on uh, the machine M that we're using. We will uh, see that this can be uh, indeed dealt with in, 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 in using what is uh, known as a universal machine. But for now, let's just look at a very simple example. So here we have two strings. So suppose this is a, this uh, length here is a very long. So we have length K and uh, assume it's a million or, or, or more bits. So the first string here is has a very simple program. Namely, we just need to um, give the machine something like 4i uh, from uh, 1 to k over 2 print 0, 1. Right, that produces this string here, the first string, whereas the second string seems does not seem to have a, a, a program as simple as that. In fact, um, we could think of this string as, uh, as, as random in the sense that there is no shorter program program than the string itself. So in the first case, we would have, given that k is rather large, we would have a very short program. So the binary encoding of this little program here is very short compared to k, the length of the string that we want to communicate. For the second string, there does not seem to be such a short program. In the worst case, we would have to give the entire string to the machine and just tell the machine, well, just copy the input to the output. And this would mean that the information present in the string is incompressible. So here we encounter the idea of measuring information by uh, data compression. And the central goal of this course is to find out how entropy relates to data compression, uh, how the uh, combinatorial and probabilistic approaches are related to the algorithmic approach based on computability and uh, data compression. As we will see, there are many interesting connections. There are uh, a lot of interesting questions, a lot of interesting mathematics happening. And uh, I hope you found this introduction interesting, uh, that it uh, made you curious to learn more about it. So I hope you will join the class and uh, I'll see you in January.